coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bacon Pound, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. Appreciate the support, man. 33, 33 years of prison stores, man. We rolling, we rolling, we rolling. Then I tell y'all, I see y'all in 24 hours, man. You know, then I tell you, I cry to you before I lie to you. I know y'all tired of seeing me, man. I know you got to be tired of seeing me, man, but I'm going to keep on coming. Because we got to get this stuff out here, man. Appreciate everybody rocking with me, man. We still on the road to 100K, man. Please subscribe, man. Let's go. We almost hit 75K, which is a blessing in itself. Uh, but we we, we got we going to have 25 more to go, man. So let's get it, man. Um, Man, today, man, I just was thinking to myself about talking about this topic. I don't think I talked about it at all yet. Um, But, you know, I'm talking about, you know, uh, gang life in Virginia prison. The gang life in Virginia prison. When I first went to prison, there was no such thing. It was no such thing. You might have had cliques, you know, people from different parts of uh, uh, neighborhoods and people from different cities, you know, Tide Water, you got Richmond, you know, you got uh, DC, you know, you got Northern Virginia, you got all of these different like cliques, but it was no gangs, you know what I'm saying? And, um, <coughs> excuse me, I think a lot of dudes stuck together like that in prison because of the simple fact, once you get in prison, you realize, you know, you in a no man's land and it's a danger zone. So I think even when dudes come to prison and they from the same neighborhoods and they really won't rocking with each other, when they in prison, it becomes some type of camaraderie because like I say, you, you in, you know, you in survival mode. You know, you in survival mode. This dude might be from your neighborhood, and if they let somebody just do something to him, it's gonna look bad on your neighborhood. Where dudes gonna think everybody from that neighborhood is soft or woo woo, so it may bring you drama. So I think that's impactful and why dudes come together. But you literally had dudes that was beefing on the streets and then you know shooting at each other and trying to take over each other, drug territory and stuff, but they get in prison, man, they coexist and they, they you know, because it's about survival. Um, and as I told you, when the gangs start filtering in the system, man, it, it was it was just crazy. Um, and right before I got out in uh, 2020, um, man, they was, yeah, they was everywhere. You know what I'm saying? They everywhere. They all over, you know. And especially up there in the mountains because I think once they determine that you, you know, a gang member or whatnot, and they and you get you know, they got a gang um a gang unit in prison. You know what I'm saying? They got a gang task force. Whereas today was coming around when the gangs had first started coming into VA prisons. They was going around and taking everybody who had tattoos and taking pictures of your tattoos, trying to see if you had any gang-related tattoos, trying to, you know, put you in the database as a gang member, woo woo woo, where they was gonna try to separate y'all and put y'all all in one place, right? I mean, they came around and photographed everybody in um, I think I was on Greensville at the time. They came around and photographed everybody that had uh tattoos and trying to see if it was gang affiliated tattoos. You know, they even asked me, was I in the game because I had some tattoos that had red red ink in it. And I'm looking at them like, for real? <laughs> for real? You know, so it, it's crazy because, like I said, it changed the whole culture of the Virginia prison system for real. Because, like I said, this was something that wasn't nobody really used to, you know, having these young dudes in there telling me they in games. And they was... They was coming in hot, man. They were coming in trying to stick together, trying to form little, you know, alliances, uh, uh, alliances and all of that type of stuff. So it, it was crazy to watch it unfold. But when you're talking about a dude like me who had been in prison already for a minute now, so I'm looking at it like, man, that's, you know, buffoonery. You know, it ain't going, you know, I, it ain't no get. But it grew. It grew. It grew. Because now it, it, it has seemed like everybody that was coming into prison was young, one of them young the younger cats that was coming in, they was either part of some type of gang or was coming in and then was getting affiliated with a gang. You know, getting getting into a gang, getting jumped into the gang. 
whether it was survival tactics or not, who knows? That's what it looked like from, from, from the optics. But that's what they was doing. So, like I said, as time went on, they was just everywhere, man. I mean, you couldn't even go on a block, you know what I'm saying, by uh, mid-2000s, maybe like 15, yeah, 14, 15, 16, all up in there. You couldn't go in no block where it won't a certain amount of gang members in there. No block on no prison. They got gang members in every block. And they was trying to implement all of these little takeover rules or you know, like they want to run the phones, they want to run the showers, they want to run the uh, the uh, microwave, you know, meaning like they're taking over showers, saying like this a blood shower. Can't nobody get in here unless you're blood. If you get in there and you ain't no blood, then you're going to get jumped. You know, this a crib shower, same thing. This a GD shower. Then you might not have number four or five showers, you know, and they done commandeer four of them. You know what I'm saying? So... It's crazy, and like I say, they not gonna fight you like one on one. They coming, they coming with a whole, you know, pack of hyenas. You know what I'm saying? So they was trying to, you know, establish their self as a force to be reckoned with in the prison system in Virginia. And you know, to this point, man, I think, I think for the most part, they done that. You know what I'm saying? They done done that. They done put themselves in a position where as to, you know. You know who's who, and you know what these dudes is doing. You know what the Blood's doing, the Crips doing, the GD's doing. You know what I'm saying? All of that. You know what they doing in, in prison. They, you know, they, 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 they getting. You know what I'm saying? More and more, you know, uh, tight knit and forming their little, you know, whatever it is that they got going on, and they trying to implement how they gonna be, you know, functioning in prison. But for the most part, most of them dudes is young dudes, and they don't really know about prison life. Even if they know about gang life, they don't know about prison life. Prison life and gang life is two different things. You see what I'm saying? And you're not going to take something that is foreign and bring it into, you know, some uh, another land and, and then usurp them and just take over. It's just not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the old heads in prison and the way that the prison system is being ran is not going to accept you know, you just coming over there and you gonna take over the whole prison. They were, everybody gonna just, you know, you know, bow down to this gang life. It ain't gonna happen, man. It ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? It goes like that in them other big cities because that's how that was prison life. Prison life was gang life. You know what I'm saying? In certain cities. But in Virginia it won't like that. So they get pushed back and they they know for the most part to separate that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I guess I don't know what their plan is. I'm assuming they gon' you know, you know, a lot of them dudes got a lot of time, so they just gonna buy, buy their time, buy their time until all of these old head dudes is out of the system. And as they going out of the system, they are implementing more and more of what they doing into the system till when all the old heads out, the next thing you know, the old heads are gonna be gang members and now, you know, Virginia prisons are gonna be converted into gang prisons just like the other big cities. You see what I'm saying? Now, to me, this is where you know, a lot of these young dudes that's out here on the street, a lot of these young dudes that are coming into prison get the message twisted, right? They thinking when they come to prison, if they are part of a gang or when they come to prison, if they join a gang, then they are safe. That is asinine. You know what I'm saying? That is asinine. Because first and foremost, ain't nobody safe in prison. Period. I don't care. Me, nobody. Ain't nobody safe in prison. Second of all, when you're dealing with these gang members, the crazy part about it is, in my experience, since I was in prison and dealing with the gang, I have never seen a gang member besides the police. I've never seen a gang member get beat up real bad or as bad as I have seen them get beat up by their own kind. Let me say that again so y'all can understand, especially you young fellas who, you know, playing with the, you know, your freedom out here and you're a gang member and you're thinking it's going to be sweet on the other side. I have never seen a gang member get beat up worse by a convict or inmate than I have seen them get beat up by their own gang. You understand? So how are you safe if the enemy could be within your whole organization. How? I, I just don't get that. You see what I'm saying? 90% of the fights, I would say 90, high, 90% of the fights I've seen with gang members has been gang on gang. 
gang on gang. Because they got all of these rules and regulations that you got to follow. And if you don't follow them, then their punishment is always physical. So if you in a gang and you supposed to do this or do that and you don't do it, then they gonna they they got these little rules and regulations, or whatever. You might have to fight one dude or you might have to fight three, four dudes. So you getting jumped on and getting more wrecked, you know what I'm saying, by you know the people that you that you run with and represent than you are from the population. Because the population really ain't gonna beef with you unless is necessary, and if it's necessary, they know that it's gonna have. They gonna have to deal with, you know, an entity. They gonna if it's a blood, they gonna have to deal with more than one blood. They ain't gonna have to just deal with you. So they may proceed in a little caution if they ain't trying to really get in no trouble like that. But if it's an old head or if it's somebody that's about that penitentiary life, they ain't tripping off of that. They ain't fighting off of that because they gonna give you what they got to give you, and you gonna have to try to get in what you got to get in. So they ain't really tripping. But for the masses. The, the gang have the gangs have established themselves enough whereas to they got enough uh power in there whereas to dudes know if you dealing with if you arguing with a dude that's a blood, if you arguing with a dude that's a crib, a GD or so on and so forth, you know that if you get into it with them, you know you getting into it with them. See what I'm saying? So that alone will deter the average dude or try to be make him feel, try to be more diplomatic, depending on where his status at and how he's doing his bit. You see what I'm saying? But it will make a dude think. So, you may be getting less pushback, not, not saying you ain't going to get none at all. You may be getting less pushback from the other side, but look at what you got to go through within your own organization. Because they're going to put you in positions that you may have to do something that may cost you to get more time. You may have to do something that may cost you to get hurt. You may have to do something that you don't want to do, but if you don't do it, then you're going to get assaulted by the same people that you represent. The same people, dog. And then, depending upon what it is, they may assault you, then cash you out. And then you out there against everybody, and you don't got them. So, you got to ask yourself, is that a real good decision? Is that really a, a position that you want to be in? Because let me tell you something. <laughs> You know, you're going to have to do that time by yourself no matter what the situation is, period. If you catch more time, you're going to be in there longer, and, and that's on you. That's that's going to affect you directly. That's going to affect your family directly, your loved ones directly. But when you in that penitentiary, man, them, them game dudes, the ones that sit on the top of the throne or the ones that's in, you know, got rank or whatever, they calling shots. They really ain't getting their hands dirty, man. That's going to be on you. They gonna tell you to go do. Oh man, we don't like him. He running the store box, man. Go get him, man. You got to pop off on him today, man. I ain't, I ain't got nothing against him, man. You gonna pop off on the day? If you don't pop off on the day, we popping off on you. Period. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, when they send you on them type of missions, you on your own. Unless they send two of you or three of you, but you on your own. But the whole gang ain't gonna come jump in there. It's gonna be whoever they send. So you got to go put in some work where you may just have to take the L because they just want to get him off the compound. They just want to get him out the block. They just want to get him locked up. So you're going to have to take that L anyway or take the L from them. So this is grown men stuff, man. And, and, and they taking orders from other grown men and they taking orders from the administration. So this is what your life will be like if you, you know, choose to come into penitentiary and be involved in this stuff. You're not only going to have to take orders from this administration. You're taking orders from another man who got sentenced just like you got sentenced and got time just like you got time and got family waiting on, on, on him out there just like you got family waiting on you out there. But yet you're going to have to put yourself in harm's way. You're going to have to put yourself in a position where you may get more time. You're going to have to put yourself in a position where you may get hurt. You may get killed depending on who they send you at. So, this is this is reality. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you what I know, not what they feeding you. I'm telling you this is what's going on in there. You know what I'm saying? And I done seen these dudes get sent on missions, man, that could have got them killed. I mean, I have spoke on some of them right before um, I left Wallace Ridge or when I was, yeah, right before I left Wallace Ridge, I told you the gang members was arguing with an older CO in there, and, and they sent two dudes because they ain't like them, because truth be told, the CO was racist and mean and, and vicious as I don't know what, but he was an old cat, and you know, he's a CO, 
But they send two little young dudes, man, that don't know nothing about the penitentiary, don't know nothing about life, don't know nothing about nothing. They sent them dudes, man, that sacrifice your lambs, man, to jump on that CO and not only jump on them, but to stab them. So they jumped on them and put the Bethlehem in them and beat that old man down. And, man, let me tell you, man, they beat them young boys so bad. Them young boys was lucky. And when I tell you lucky to get to the hospital alive, man, but they punish them young boys who, who gonna be uh 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 gonna have a bad scars of that incident for the rest of their life. For the rest of their life, up, up, on top of the time that they're gonna receive for doing it. On top of the beatings they're gonna take on every other compound they go on when they heal up from other officers that know what you did to an officer. Why the dudes who sent you on that mission is sitting back and and like, yeah, he a soldier. Yeah, but he ain't gonna get he ain't gotta he ain't gotta take none of that. What I just told you, you gonna have to go through. He ain't gonna go through none of that. You understand me? Man, they beat them boys so bad, man. This is like this 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 man, this probably like two man. No, Wallace Ridge, yeah, this probably like two thousand this probably like two thousand thirteen, two thousand twelve or something like that, somewhere up in that range. Man, them boys, they beat them boys so bad, them boys probably still healing to this day. To this day, they probably still here. That's how bad they beat them boys. They dragged them out there, and man, they almost killed them young fellas. You know what I'm saying? But and that's just one incident. But I can think of several, several incidents, man, where they send these dudes. I have seen them send them at old heads, man. The old heads put that Bethlehem in them, you know, and go to hole. And now he stuck. He late. He pushed back. He'd have been in penitentiary 20, 25 years trying to get out there. He got to stay even longer because they got somebody coming at him with some foolishness because they don't like how he move in the prison. They don't like how he done established himself, how he get respect. So they want to get rid of him because they want that respect. That respect can cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? That respect you trying to take from somebody that earned can cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? But they notice the ones that's calling the shots. So they not coming at you like that. They're going to send you. They're going to send you and you have no other choice but to go or either you're going to take a beat down. And then you're going to be cast out and then you're on your own. So even you, you're not just stuck. Now you super stuck. You understand me? Now you super stuck. So going into prison and thinking that you're going to get in a gang or you're going to be all right or you, man, you not. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you not. You are not, man. You are not safe. One, not one iota, man. And like I said, least likely safe from the people that you run with, man. You, I used to see them cats out there on the yard, man. It, at any given time you go out on the yard, you might see them over there in the corner or something. And one of the dudes is is getting two or three dudes just pummeling, boom, 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 and they pummeling him, and he part of them. He a gang member. And they beating him because he done violated something. He done did something that's against their rules or regulations. You a grown man taking whoopings in the penitentiary because you not listening to another grown man that got this, uh, a sentence just like you got a sentence. You tell me where that makes sense at. I don't, I don't knock these dudes for what they do. If that's their thing. That's how they survive. That's what they believe in. That's their culture. That's what they want to do. Cool. But I'm talking about from my perspective, that don't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? It just don't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I, I got the answer to the administration because they are in between me and my freedom. I'm not going to be sitting there answering to another man that's trying to get the same thing that I'm trying to get. He's trying to get freedom too. And I'm going to take orders from you? No. <laughs> no. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Even in my younger years, I wouldn't have succumbed to that. But this is what is going on in prison right now. This is, I mean, it's big, man, and it's getting bigger, you know what I'm saying? And some of them dudes in them gangs is, you know, you know, they smart dudes, man. You got some of them. I've met some of them. I've, I rock with some of them. Some of them are cool, but I never try to change their mind about what they're doing because it's so embedded in their brain. You know, it's just like white boy Cody. When I first met Cody, Cody had that stuff so deep in his brain, and the only reason I tried to you know, talk sense into him because he was right there in my domain. He was in the cell with me. But he later found out that everything I said was true. It was right and exact. This stuff is not going to serve you no purpose, man, besides to try to buy you some time in the penitentiary. And the only reason dudes join when they get in the penitentiary is because they think that they would be more protected. But what I'm trying to let you know is 
the danger that you are putting yourself in is going to come from what you are joining. You might you might be a little bit more protected from the population and all the flim flammery and skullduggery and larceny and Tom fool. You might be because you got this entity, you know, this this name backing you. But who's backing you from the name? Who's backing you from what you represent? When they send you on a mission that you don't even want to do because you join this because you don't want to be into that. But what you going to do when they send you into that? When they send you in the lines then by yourself to prove yourself. Man, it's you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a double-edged sword, my brother. It's a double-edged sword. The first thing you should do is not try to be out here putting yourself in a position to go to prison. But the second thing you should do is to go to prison and you have to do your time. You should stand up on your own two feet, ten toes in the dirt and whatever happens, happens. And you just protect you at all costs. But to come in there and to join something, to try to make um, it safer for you or better for you, is um, it, it just don't add up to me. You know what I'm saying? It just don't add up to me because you could, you know, yourself try to navigate your way through prison and, and, and deal with everything that comes your way head on and up front and go through less than you would if you were in an entity that's going to create problems for you just because of their name. You see what I'm saying? Just because of their name or what mission they might want to send you on. Because if you joining something, you already at the lower level. So the first time it got to be some work put in, you're going to be the first name on the uh, on the, on, on the roster. You understand me? You're going to be the first one they call. You're going to be cannon fodder. They're going to throw you straight out there to the wolves. You know? And, you know, like I say, if you go out there and show and prove, then you got to worry about getting some more time on top of that too. So, um, yeah, man, it, 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 it's wild in there. But they in there. And they in there and um and, and, and they're forced to be reckoned with. And I'm telling you this because it's reality. They definitely are forced to be reckoned with. At one point when they first started, it was so few of them and it won't as widespread as it is now. You know, you would think it wouldn't grow to what it's grown, but I've seen it from when I first seen it all the way till the time I got out. Man, they everybody's everybody has um everybody has decent numbers. You know, the bloods are everywhere. The Crips. Everywhere, GDs everywhere. You understand me? So it, they they out there, you know. And it's some more, you know. But those are the most prevalent ones, or the ones that I knew the most when right before I left. But you know, they are forced to be reckoned with. But I do know that for sure, man. That they um, yeah, they beat their own kind too. That's a, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? They beat their own kind for discipline reasons, for whatever, and they will excommunicate you. They will whoop you and then put you out of it. So now everybody that, that, that you done dealt with or all the enemies that you done made while you was a part of this entity are now becomes just your enemy by yourself. And you the one that's going to have to fend for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And then when you run into one of them and they don't like you no more because now you no more part of them, you may get static from them. So how did it really help you in the long run or did it hurt you? You know, these are these are real valid questions, man. So, you know, but because like I say, um, it's everywhere in the Virginia penal system right now. And they and like up in the mountains, Wallace Ridge, Red Onion King Mountain, they got whole units, man, where where, where this is where they gonna house you. They gonna house you. And before it's over with, I believe that they just gonna have a whole prison because they build them like they, you know, uh uh uh, uh what do you call them? House of cards. They just put them up as they want to. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a business now. So I believe before it's all over with, man, they're going to have a whole prison with nothing but gang members on there. And all them gang members on there are going to be different gang members, which is going to be just gang wars. And it's going to just have a whole lot of young brothers killing each other and they ain't going to never, you know, see these streets because whoever don't get killed going to be getting more time after more time after more time. So either way, you're creating a whole nother violent environment that you're going to have to live in besides the violent environment that you already got to live in when you in prison. Man, this is insanity, man. <laughs> this is insanity. So, you know, who wants to live like that, man? But these are the only options when you're in prison is to live this type of lifestyle. And if you choose to come in there, you know, because that's what you're going to have to do to get the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? That's what you mostly, I ain't going to say all the time, but 90, 90 some percent of the time, that's what you're going to have to do to get the penitentiary. You're going to have to volunteer. 
yeah, you're going to have to volunteer. You're going to have to go sign up. You know what I'm saying? Say, I want to go to prison. Now, I know you probably say, I do that by the way you act, <laughs> by the decisions that you make. The decisions that you make and you volunteering to go to prison. When you want to be out here on the street, is a game member. You volunteer to go to prison. When you want to be out here on the street selling drugs, you volunteer to go to prison. When you want to be, you know, shoot them up, bang, bang, cowboys or Indian, you volunteer to go to prison. So you signing up. So if you sign up to go to prison, when you get there, you better understand what the playing field is. You better understand that, that, you know, you may not come up out of this joint. Straight up, you may not come up out of this joint. But when you go up in here and then you start getting involved in this and getting involved. See, when you come in there and you get involved in, with a gang off the rip too, or you come in there and you already gang affiliated, or you didn't already, you know, made the bit that much harder anyway. Because like I say, if nothing else, you got enemies. You come in to pay attention with enemies. That's enemies, you know what I'm saying? Because the Bloods may not like the Crips or the GDs or the, or the, and then you got the administration, the almighty administration that's going to be bearing down on you anyway. Then they bearing on down on you even harder because they didn't already label you a gang member. You already a gang member. You already a threat. Your name going in the database. Anything that comes up gang related, they coming to your door if it's in your vicinity. So... You know, make you know, make your choice, man. Pick your poison. Pick your poison, man. But um, it's it's a, it's a vicious cycle, man. It's a vicious cycle, man. But I think the first thing you gotta stop doing, man, is, is um, you know, signing up for prison, man. Signing up for it. Stop volunteering to go up in this uh joint that everybody, everybody is trying to get out of. Everybody in prison is trying to get out of. They trying to get out of prison. So we steady got volunteers that will come to prison. So I don't I don't get that neither, but that is what it is, you know. But I'm just trying to let you know point blank that um being in a gang in prison is not gonna make your time even you no know, no more easier, brother. It, I would argue to say that it might make it even harder, you know, because now you got something that you got to represent all times in prison besides yourself. Besides your individuality, besides your principles, your morals, your standards, you got to represent that as well because you chose to be a part of that and you're going to have to stand for that, you know, and you can be a part of that and not be a part of this beef, but this beef could be with that name alone and in, in, in running to you and now you already got an enemy that might want to hurt you just because of what you represent because he may not respect that or he may got beef with that and you may end up in his vicinity or and then you got problems. They have put gang members in the cell with dudes that had problems with gang members and, you know, on mistake or, or, or either on purpose, who knows, but then once he get in there, he got to deal with that person one-on-one. -on -one. And once he get in there and a dude know that he don't like him or he got a problem with him, Man, I done said they gonna get you before the doors open because they wanna go to jail. Go ahead and punish you right then and there while you on your own and go to jail and get moved because they know if the doors open and that dude leave up out of that cell and go tell him his other game brothers, look, man, my celly don't even like blood, so my celly got a problem with me. Oh, they coming in, they coming down there about <laughs> you picked it up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten deep. So a dude already know that. So if you get in this cell and they put you in this cell and this lockup and this count time, and that's what it is, a dude gonna go ahead on and get you then because he'd rather deal with one than deal with ten. You know, that's his common sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's good mathematics to me. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and fight this one instead of fighting ten. You know, so, you know, it, uh, that safety thing, man, and, and thinking that is just, um, that's a facade, man. And I just wanted to put that out there and let that be known, man, that, you you know, being a part of a gang does not make you safe in prison, man. You know, nothing is safe in prison and nobody is safe in prison. And the only thing that, um, you know, make you safe in prison is, you know, getting out of prison. That's about it. And that's the only thing that I can think of that will make you safe in prison is to get out of prison. That's it. Other than that, when you're in there, you're always in danger, man. You just got to pick the danger that you want to be in and the danger that you be in, whether you you cause it or it will be caused by you being associated with something else. That's all I'm saying, man. But anyway, man, I just wanted to speak on that for a minute. 
you know, because uh, it was on my mind. And, you know, every now and then, man, I had stuff on this old crazy brain. I had to get it off. So, TBP, I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope if you got some little youngers around you that's in games or, you know, that's out here that's in trouble, man, that y'all share this video with them, man, so they can get some insight of what's really going on inside there. Not what they looking at on TV and not what they hearing in the streets. This is how it's really going on in Virginia anyway. That's a fact. But, um... So y'all share these videos, man. Somebody might need to listen to it, man. So maybe they'll, you know, you know, erase their name off that volunteer list, man, and say, man, this ain't this ain't what I want to sign up for, you know. But uh, in the meantime, man, in between time, man, like I say, it's it's a blessing in every lesson here, man. And the blessing is, man, that we, you know, we can live a life, we can have some experiences, we can learn some things, we can get some knowledge, man, and we can pass it on to somebody that it might actually help that it might actually change their mind. And this is why I make these type of videos so it could get to somebody, man, and might make them see things a little different or, or look at things a little you know, more clearer and make a better decision, man. So if you got some knowledge, man, try to pass it on to somebody, man, especially somebody that's younger than you who you know don't have that knowledge. Whether they accept it or not is not, you know what I'm saying, that's not your responsibility. But I do think it's your responsibility to try to give it to somebody, especially if you think they might need it. You know, let the rest fall on them, man. But, um, you know. I see y'all about 24 hours, man. God willing, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions. Hit that subscribe button if you ain't subscribed, man. Talk to me in the comments. I talk back. And by all means, man, y'all duck them hooks, man. They out there everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. Stop volunteering for crazy stuff. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.